Today I'm going to talk about layers in landscape photography. First, I'm going to discuss what is this concept of layers in landscape photography, what are the benefits of using this concept and how they improve your photos. And then I'm going to show you seven of my own photos, point out the layers, point out the way they interact with the composition and how they benefit your landscape photos. So let's get started. Um, what, is, what is this concept of layers? As a landscape photographer, of course, you're trying to capture the landscape that it's in front of you. In order to do that in the best way as possible, you need to create an immersive experience. The viewer needs to have enough information to, to receive that landscape in a way that makes him or her want to be there or feel that they are there. By introducing this concept of layering, you are adding depth to your photos. And this technique can be used if you're using a wide angle or you, if you're using a telephoto, as you will see in the examples that I'm going to show you. Let's uh, start by uh, looking at seven of the photos that I did during my last workshop, the workshop that I did uh, this uh, weekend. And I will start with this image. This is the first sunset that we photographed. And as you can see, even if I have this area which is closer to me and then I have the trail and I have the mountains in the distance so even if I have these three areas uh, because of the light it feels like let me undo this it feels like this area together with the trail and kind of like uh, the mountains over here form one big huge area the layering, the true layering comes between this area over here and these mountains, these peaks in the distance. After that, you uh, have secondary, secondary layering in these ridges over here, this one, this one, and this one. And those three elements over there, I could have removed them by sitting really low and not include them in, the, in my photos. In my photo but I thought that they complement everything really well uh, it shows how far away these mountains over here are how many ridges you have you would have to hike if you want to get to that location there so um, I'm introducing a lot of information by using this layering and this is not information that the viewer would, is going to analyze in a conscious way. It's not something that he or she will say, um, okay, I'm seeing this and because of that I'm going, I would have to hide. No, it's something that happens like this. It happens in an instant. And the brain of the viewer understands this information just like uh, he, would be, uh, he would be there and would, would realize how far away those peaks really are. Now, um, let's move to the second photo. So, night came and of course, this is the classical tent shot with the Milky Way. And um, I have the first layer, which is obviously the tent. And then I have, so this is the, the, the first one, layer number one. Layer number two is the lake. Whoa, that's an ugly two. Layer number two is the lake and then this ridge, this ridge over here. And the third layer is uh, the sky full of stars. So yeah, uh, we just found out that I'm really bad of using my mouse to draw letters, <laughs> to, to draw numbers. <laughs> so these are the three elements. And um, first of all, I stayed really low. And included only the tent and uh, the sky full of stars and then I thought well it would be interesting to see a little bit of, of, of the lake and the silhouette of the mountain because this would give you a lot more context the experience will, would be a lot more immersive and for people that know this area they will recognize uh, the place where I, I put the tent. Let's move 
to another sunrise. So I'm standing um, on top of a valley and I waited for the sun to rise from my left. And now I'm having, um, in terms of layering, I'm having layer one over here, which is formed by these rocks. And then I have layer number two, the valley. And within this element, I have this third element. And why this one really can represent the third element is because it's receiving light and it's different uh, because of the light from the other elements that surround it, which are uh, in shadow. Of course, you are going to have the fourth element over here in the distance. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, it, it helps a lot with uh, the separation of the third layer in my, uh, in my personal opinion. Now let's move to the fourth image, which is a classical layering. This is done by using a telephoto lens. And that is why I told you there is no excuse in the lens that you're using. So I'm having the first layer, which is a darker one, second, third, and fourth you may have as many layers as possible. The thing is this, uh, if we look at this in terms of composition, so I'm having something like this, it goes like this, it goes up, and then I'm having all these elements that support um, the main area over here. And if you want to learn more about landscape photography, I have my own ebook about landscape photography and I show you 50 case studies. I show you photos of mine and I discuss it uh, in, in terms like this and explain to you the composition. If you're interested, um, the link is in the description of this video on my website. You go there and you purchase the ebook. Uh, but this is the idea with this uh, layering and composition here. Let's move on to the next photo. So the first layer is this pillar of stone. And this is... Uh, the starting point of our journey into the photo. As you can see, there is no separation with light. These are moments before sunrise, and I don't have uh, this, uh, this the, the ability to play with light. Of course, I did this photo with also with light, but I wanted to point out that you can have layering even if the light is flat. So I have layer number one, and layer number one is the entire area over here. And then you have layer number two, because you realize this is further away. And you realize this is further away because of this element over here. And in the end, we're going to have layer number three, which are the mountain, mountains um, in the background. And the separation is created by color. You have uh, yellow, green in this area, and then you have blue on the mountains in the background. The sixth photo. This is a photo that I really like. Um, and the separation here is, is created by the light. And you, basically we have one, two, and a very, very fine uh, hint of the third. It's not, it's not easy to observe that third layer um, in the background. I don't know about it, but um, the people over there help a lot with the perspective and you realize how impressive and beautiful and uh, massive these mountains are. But um, as you can see um, in, this, in this situation, whenever you have uh, a separation in light uh, or with the help of light, you can very easily use this uh, technique. And now the last photo, and these are some uh, climbers, not hikers. These are climbers uh, on a very dangerous spot. Let me just zoom a little bit for you to see. Uh, there are three of them. You see two of them. I don't know if this one is the third over here. Yeah, that's one. That's that's the third over here. They are analyzing what is happening, but um, what I liked was this ridge over here, which is number one, layer number one, layer number two, and just a small hint of 
of some other uh, mountain in the background. Tell me in comments if you're using this technique. Tell me how useful this video was. And uh, until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Bye-bye.